Hi, everyone. I'm Kurt Ronnie, your instructor for this course. This is Business 410, Strategic Management, the non-traditional seven-week version. If you're watching this video, it's because you already know that this is an introduction or orientation to the course. Uh, and this uh, is a particularly important part of the course, this kickoff is, uh, because uh, non-traditional uh, seven-week courses are compressed uh, from the 15 or 16-week version that we conduct in classes on campus. You've decided to take this course in an abbreviated form uh, in only seven weeks, uh, and to do so uh, remotely by watching this course using Zoom. And we're very glad that you have decided to do so. But because the course is in a compressed fashion, and because it's for only seven weeks, we have to make a few modifications in order to fit everything in. So the purpose of this orientation, aside from just getting you started in the course, is to explain how the course is going to uh, be conducted, uh, what the contents and timing will be, how your grade will be computed, uh, and simply to uh, uh, acquaint you with uh, the course in this uh, shorter uh, form than the more traditional form. So with that, uh, I'm going to bring up some PowerPoint slides that will help me to explain uh, the course to you and uh, hopefully get you started off on a good foot. So let me see if I can find these PowerPoint slides. Sometimes uh, they, uh, they're kind of hard for, for me to locate because I have so much on my computer. But this time I got lucky, and here they are. Uh, so um, the course, as you probably uh, already know, is about strategic management. Just what strategic management entails, of course, is part of what we'll be discussing in this video. But strategic management is a relatively new discipline of management. Uh, I happen to have uh, practiced strategic management uh, as a manager, consultant, and executive of a large couple large corporations uh, for about 40 years. And although that makes me an old timer, strategic management itself is relatively new as a business discipline, and yet just about every large corporation and most small ones uh, have at least one manager who's responsible for strategic management, and large corporations have entire departments devoted to strategic management and strategic planning, another term that we'll be getting into during the course. So, uh, strategic management is about, it consists of the methods that managers use to look at the external environment uh, and, uh, and see how the firm's capabilities can fit into uh, that environment. In other words, to assess a firm's economic environment and its ability to satisfy customers' needs with distinctive competence. That's another important term in our profession uh, because there are probably several firms in your industry, all of whom are trying to satisfy customers. Some will be more successful than others and they will be given the permission uh, by our economic system to continue on doing that. Those that are not successful those that do not distinguish themselves through competence uh, will probably eventually have to withdraw from the industry. So our challenge in 
strategic management is to figure out how to be a survivor in Darwin's little game. Uh, once we've assessed the external environment and internal capabilities, uh, we can go about the task of setting uh, targets, goals, or standards for success and uh, objectives for the way in which we'll pursue success, so-called strategic objectives for sustained competitive and financial success. Uh, in order to, uh, to, to be a long-term survivor and a long-term winner in industrial competition, firms have to win competitively and if they do it the right way, they'll win financially. Uh, you can win financially for a short term simply by avoiding costs and maybe even raising prices. Uh, but if you haven't win in, won competitively, uh, you probably won't be permitted to raise prices. Uh, but if you don't win competitively, you won't have enough business to support your enterprise and uh, therefore, the enterprise will be financially unsuccessful. So at the end of the day, uh, we're really talking about competitive success. Competitive success is followed by financial success. Uh, so uh, once we've gotten to the point of setting goals and objectives, we'll be talking about the approach to pursuing those goals and objectives and that, that the approach and management's rationale for selecting the approach rather than alternatives is what we mean when we use the term strategy. Strategy is all the work and concept that management intends to pursue its goals and its rationale for selecting the approach to be taken rather than alternatives. And finally, we'll talk a bit about uh, the approach that is required to implement strategy successfully. Here again, we're in this position where we can't really get into the details of implementation uh, the way we'd like to because uh, we only have seven weeks and we have other courses in operations management anyway. So we'll talk about the general approach, but we won't get into that much detail. This is an excerpt from the syllabus. Uh, it looks like it has a lot of words, but uh, you can read it pretty quickly. And it, it pretty well captures the essence of the course. So if you'll forgive me, I'm going to read it. And I hope you'll read it with me. This course concentrates on the managerial tasks of crafting and implementing comprehensive strategies and plans for achieving sustained competitive advantage just the way we spoke. A fundamental theme of the course is that firms are most likely to achieve sustained success if their managers have sound strategic plans. So it's both a skills course and a big picture course that integrates the knowledge gained that you gained from prior business courses. It'll sharpen your ability to think strategically by assessing and matching internal competences to opportunities and problems in the external environment. You'll also learn how to select goals, develop strategic objectives, and form strategies to achieve those objectives. Thus, the course integrates perspectives of the chief executive, senior management, and the entire management structure. That's it. That's all there is to it. Oh, well, I was going to say so you can turn off your computer now, but we actually have a little more to cover. Um, here's a little background on me. Uh, uh, you've got a right to know who your instructor is. And so uh, the, these are a few uh, words about me. At one time, I was vice president for corporate planning and development at Phillips Industries. I also was director of corporate planning at Holiday Inn when it was just getting started and growing. At that time, it was one of the most successful companies uh, in its industry. Uh, I was with uh, the firm of Pete Marwick Mitchell and Company, which is a big CPA firm now called KPMG. Uh, back then, 
uh, Pete Marwick uh, had one of the largest management consulting practices in the world. And I was uh, located in the St. Louis office of Pete Marwick Mitchell, uh, after which I moved to New York City uh, to uh, join the internal consulting department of PepsiCo. Uh, and I uh, was an internal uh, management consultant at PepsiCo at the time when PepsiCo was growing very rapidly. Uh, at that, shortly before then, PepsiCo and Frito-Lay uh, had merged to become a great big corporation uh, specializing in beverages and snacks. I say great big because even then it was pretty good size, uh, but nothing like it is today. Today it's really big. And I'm pleased and proud to say that I had some, something to do with planning uh, that growth. Uh, not much, but some. Um, anyway, uh, after I uh, retired uh, from uh, the consulting firm that I headed for about 18 years, uh, I got into academics. Uh, during the transition period, uh, I was at the Antioch University McGregor School uh, of Graduate Management and uh, uh, later on, I moved to North Carolina Wesleyan full-time. Uh, and uh, then for the past 14 years, uh, I've been a professor of management at uh, what was then Mount Olive College, and now, of course, is the University of Mount Olive. So uh, it says, see the syllabus for additional information. I think you've already had plenty. Um, Anyway, that's who I am. I've been doing this for easily a half a century. More than that, I will not admit. Um, so the uh, scope and objectives of the course um, to, is, includes reviewing the entire strategic management process, how managers go through the process of strategic planning and implementing their strategic plans through strategic management. Um, and to do that, there are a series of steps, including assessing the economy, market, and industry, the external environment, evaluating the firm's capabilities competitively, uh, then deciding exactly what the firm's purpose will be uh, what portion of the external environment will be served what standards of success will be, and so forth. And then finally, as we said earlier, formulating strategies to achieve goals uh, and implementing them in a regular, uh, you know, reliable way using methods and procedures that are unique to strategic planning and strategic planning departments uh, and strategic managers managers of strategic planning departments and corporations must be familiar uh, with those methods and uh, as they gather them over time can take greater responsibility for uh, conducting those procedures uh, in the corporation. So uh, having stated uh, the scope, uh, we, can, we can sort of summarize the objectives of the course. Uh, first of all, you need to acquire some essential strategic management skills. And if you complete this course successfully, that's what you'll do um, to gain an appreciation of just what distinctive competence uh, and a firm's competitive position in its environment are insofar as being requisites for sustainable competitive advantage. Uh, We'll consider the differences between strategic planning for a great big corporation which has uh, several businesses within it, uh, as well as strategic planning for just one business. And many corporations have just one business. Um, 
Strategy implementation, uh, although I mentioned earlier that uh, we can't get into the gruesome details, we at least must become aware of just how important it is to implement strategy reliably. And so I'll try to share some of my experience uh, implementing strategy in the real world with you, uh, just to try to, to share with you how important it is. Uh, I think that professional strategy managers, including myself, uh, come to uh, realize that you can learn the theory and the methods and the techniques of strategic planning and strategic management. That's one thing. But to get strategic plans implemented to make strategy happen uh, requires uh, experience uh, and uh, uh, the ability to work within a corporation successfully. Uh, making strategy happen is probably a lot more difficult than making strategy in the first place. Making strategy is a lot of fun. It's very challenging intellectually. But uh, getting people within a corporation to actually do uh, what strategy calls for, and I might add that that strategy is ultimately uh, selected by senior executives. So uh, it's not as though people in the corporation don't have a responsibility to implement strategy. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's one thing to say that, and that's another thing to do it. Uh, and finally, we'll, from time to time, we'll just lean back and think about uh, how top management, senior management deals uh, with all of this, setting objectives, uh, forming strategy, getting folks to implement it, coordinating with others, making selections, uh, usually Top management has several alternatives uh, with regard to the objectives uh, and even the long-term goals uh, that the corporation might pursue. Uh, but a, a senior executive has to make those decisions, has to make those selections. That is pretty heady stuff. That's why they get paid so much. So just to sort of summarize uh, the one concept that I've been sharing with you, uh, I prepared this little diagram. I don't know whether it will help you or not. But that outer circle is the external environment. And it consists of the economy, which affects just about everything. Uh, the industry, which is made up of your firm, and other firms in the same industry uh, that your firm is in, uh, your competitors, at least many of them, and uh, the markets that that industry serves. And those markets, of course, are impacted by the economy. And the industry is affected by the economy. And the economy is affected by changes in the industry. And you guessed it. The economy is also affected by changes in markets. So, uh, and those markets include more than simply demand for the products your firm makes, but the, uh, the demand that, that many firms make around the world, uh, as, as well as the demand for capital uh, and uh, of finance. So uh, markets are pretty complex, just like industries are and they have impacts on the economy. And yet, as the economy shifts in response to those things, there's a recycling effect back into those industries and markets. Uh, so it's, it's easy to draw this diagram. It's very complicated to live, it, live in it uh, for real, in real life. And enmeshed in the middle of this network is your firm. Uh, which is part of the industry, which responds to the uh, economy and uh, the markets that your firm serves. 
So it sits there in the middle of all this. And the challenge that you have as a strategic manager is to achieve a fit uh, with uh, the firm's resources, with the skills that the people in the firm have, uh, as well as the, the offsets, your liabilities and your inabilities. You have to take into account all those things in order ultimately to decide as a senior executive or a planning manager, which allocation of resources, which utilization and exploitation of skills is going to enable the firm to thrive in its environment and perform as well as possible. And that, of course, is a great big challenge. And it's also what this course is about. OK. Uh, yep, there are limitations of a seven week course. Uh, the 15 week course is a capstone course. This one probably is too in your curriculum. Uh, but uh, that capstone course includes a great big case study. Teams of students form, uh, each team selects a corporation to study. And throughout the course, uh, gathers information about the company that they study with my assistance. And as we go through the course, additional information is gathered corresponding to each topic or subtopic every week. In a seven week course, we just don't have the time to do that. I wish we did because there's nothing that replaces actually doing something. It's the old adage, you know, once you've learned how to ride a bike, you can do it forever. Uh, and uh, uh, so in my traditional course, uh, I try to take people through the process of strategic planning so that uh, they can go out and uh, potentially you know, seek jobs as, as strategic managers themselves, or at least participate more productively in strategic planning. Uh, here, uh, we can't do that, but what we can do is take a look at some mini cases, some small cases, uh, which are summarized at the back of the textbook that I've asked you to acquire. Uh, don't get an electric you know, electronic book. Get the real thing. Get the hard copy because that's where these cases are. But we'll select three of them. As a matter of fact, I already have. But you may want to look at others in the, in the back of the book. There are some really interesting ones. Uh, but they include just about all the information that we would gather in a strategic planning uh, process. And uh, so we'll have an opportunity to look at those cases and talk about, think about how uh, managers struggled with their strategic decisions and uh, made them. I think we have three of those cases. Um, and they will take your time to uh, study. And I will ask you to write uh, a paper uh, in response to a question about each one of those cases. Uh, and that, again, will give you an opportunity to sort of flex your muscles and, and uh, uh, become familiar with the challenges of strategic planning and strategic management. Um, OK, and uh, since we're, we're in a very difficult time economically, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with the fact that we, uh, as I make this course, uh, this this video, uh, we are suffering with a, a coronavirus pandemic, uh, and uh, we never know quite what that's going to do to our academic procedures and schedules. But uh, for a variety of reasons, we may deviate from the syllabus, uh, but I'll try to stay on track as best I can. Um, and uh, the last item is that there's a lot of material in this course, and you have to make enough time for it, even though we've tried to streamline it enough uh, for you to get through it in seven weeks. 
Okay, so uh, basically, here's the way the course will unfold. There will be four lectures, um, the, the, an introduction to strategic management, not this lecture, but a, a, a summary of the strategic management process, what all is involved. Then we'll talk about what's out there in that outer circle that we looked at, uh, the strategic environment. Uh, and uh, we'll, actually there are uh, two parts of that so-called second lecture. The, they're, they're, they're actually two separate lectures. So uh, I'm guilty of uh, untruth in advertising here, I guess. Uh, but the first one is about assessing the economy, markets, and industry, and it's a monster. It's huge. I think it goes for almost two hours, and you really need to turn off the computer, pause the recording, and go do something else for a while, and then come back, uh, because it's just so long. Uh, in uh, more recent versions of uh, these videos, and these PowerPoints, I've actually uh, broken that first lecture down uh, into separate segments so uh, that uh, they can be digested individually. But in this course, we're going to do all that in one monster presentation. Uh, the second half isn't half at all. It's much shorter. Uh, but it's about the analysis of a firm's internal capabilities. Remember, the challenge in strategic management is to get a fit between those two things. And uh, when we do that, and the way we do that is by making certain strategic decisions uh, and selecting goals and ultimately strategy. First, so first identifying the objectives of strategy that flow from the goals. Uh, and then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about implementation. As I mentioned earlier, we can't get into excruciating detail. Uh, but that fourth or fifth lecture uh, is, uh, is intended to acquaint you with some of the, the, uh, uh, the ways in which strategy is implemented. Your chapter is, is uh, or your textbook is relatively brief. It has 10 chapters. I chose it because uh, one of the authors, Margaret Petteroff, is considered to be one of the real long ball hitters in strategic management. Uh, and I, I think that this textbook will uh, serve our purpose in this abbreviated course quite well. We may have only seven weeks, but in seven weeks, you can read 10 chapters. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll take a look at three cases. I've called them mini cases, but that's only because they're all nice and neatly packed for you in the back of the textbook. But they're not that many, really. They're, they're, uh, there's plenty of material in them. Uh, there will be tests. Uh, there will be quizzes on every lecture. Uh, and really, I, that numeral four, that parenthesis, four in parenthesis should be five. Uh, and every chapter. There will be just two tests. So they're important. Uh, and they're meant to divide the course in half. Uh, so the first test. Uh, will be on chapters one through five and the first two lectures. And the second test will be on chapters six through 10 and the second two chapter lectures, which are a lot briefer than the first two. The many cases are, uh, as I mentioned, at the end of your textbook. Uh, they've already been selected. You will find them in your syllabus identified. Uh, and they, they illustrate uh, the challenges as well as strategic management principles. I'll be asking you questions about how the principles in your textbook apply in those cases, and I'll ask you to write about them. Uh, but you'll, you'll see in these cases how uh, real executives struggled with real strategic management problems. 
Uh, and those tests that I mentioned will include questions not just on the chapters, but on those many cases. So if you want to get through this course successfully, here's what you have to do. You have to pass quizzes on text chapters, quizzes on lectures. Um, I might add that there may be an additional uh, topic or two added to the scope of the course. Uh, they could even include supplemental reading. Uh, at the end of the course, uh, I'm going to show you some material on how the coronavirus, the pandemic, has influenced strategic management decisions. And I'll probably put a quiz uh, in, the, in the course uh, on uh, that material. And there may be something uh, like that on analytic methods, uh, you know, the various uh, devices that managers use to analyze the way firms fit with their external environment. The real techniques that you could take out of this course, you could virtually copy the PowerPoints and take them with you to your job uh, as a uh, strategic planning manager. Uh, and there, will, there, there could be a quiz on those. So in addition to those 14 quizzes that you see, there might be a couple other quizzes. Um, there will be these essay papers on the three many cases, two tests on the chapters and lectures. Now, there's one other thing that, uh, that uh, frustrates uh, some of us, uh, including students and professors. And that is the Tillman School of Business outbound exam. Uh, the, uh, the business school needs to know how well it's doing compared to other business schools um, and to make adjustments in its courses uh, as a result of uh, the results uh, that come from analyses of the way its students or its graduates uh, perform in tests versus graduates of other schools. So there's a sort of a standardized test uh, that is compiled by an independent firm. Uh, and all of our graduates are asked to take this test. And it's at this point that uh, the business school asks students to take that test uh, because you're near the end of your curriculum and we want to see generally what broad scope of knowledge you've acquired. Um, and so uh, I'm, I wish they, that the business school would have found another way to do this uh, than to add it to my course because uh, the outbound exam really uh, has very little, has a little tiny bit to do with strategic management, but it covers the entire gamut of business school topics. You can't study for this course, uh, this test either. You just take the test. Um, the purpose, as I say, is diagnostic to benefit the business school. So you do not have to get a high score to get a high grade. Uh, I think if you get a 70 or better, uh, you get an A. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the points on this outbound exam are only five out of 100 for the course. So this outbound exam is worth 5% of your course grade. And if your, your grade is borderline, your composite grade is borderline, uh, and it so happens that you didn't do as well as a 70 on this outbound exam, you'll get fewer than the five points. And in that case, uh, I will uh, pay more attention to the remainder of the course than the, uh, the score that you 
might have gotten for the outbound exam. I think if you got a 70 or better, you got five points. If you got 60 or better, you got four. 50 or better, you got three. Uh, 40 or better, you got two. And uh, 30 or better, you got one. And you'll get the idea. Uh, but it's meant to be passed, and it's meant to earn those five points. Uh, but uh, if points were not assigned, uh, the feeling of the folks who made this up is that uh, you then would not take the outbound exam. So points were assigned uh, to it so that uh, you would be compelled to take that outbound exam. OK, so here's how your grades calculated. It's really pretty simple. The quizzes are worth 15 points. Each one of the tests is worth 25 points. So that's where you really have to get it done. Each one of those mini case papers will be worth 10 points. So that's 30. And then the outbound exam for five. And if I'm lucky, that adds up to 100 points. I'm an old man, so anything's possible. Um, so here's how the course will unfold. In week one, uh, we'll do this introduction. Uh, then we'll have, uh, so we're the, the virtually the first bullet on this slide is what we're doing right now. Uh, there will be lecture one on the strategic planning methods and uh, the, the scope of them. Chapter one and chapter two are on the same subjects, but my, in my lectures, I emphasize methodology. Textbooks tend to emphasize theory. So my purpose is always to try to give you a complete package. In week two, we start that, we do that great big monster lecture on the external environment. Chapter three in your textbook is, is not uh, too long, and it's about an analyzing the industry. There's a mini case, uh, and it's about Under Armour, uh, you know, the, the athletic apparel wear that uh, you probably wear when you're uh, when you're doing sports. Week three is the easier of the uh, half, so-called half, uh, of lecture two, and that's on capabilities analysis. Uh, and so lecture three is also offered, and that's, uh, that's on how we make strategic decisions to select goals and strategy. Chapter four in your textbook uh, is on resources and capabilities, and uh, that's the chapter that reflects the contributions of Professor Petaroff, who I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, she's an expert, uh, actually one of the founders of what I'll call modern resource-based view of competitive advantage. When I learned strategic management, I learned uh, about how to position a firm within its market uh, most favorably. Uh, and market positioning was pretty much what there was in strategic management. And I'm oversimplifying. That's not true, but it was large. It's essentially true. Uh, but then along came the resource-based theorists. Uh, and uh, they based their work on uh, work that had been done by a British economist uh, several years earlier uh, about the nature, the importance of resources in, in determining competitive advantage. And the next thing you knew, we realized that there were two halves of the equation for competitive advantage. We still worry about market positioning, but we also now worry about resources and uh, the uh, capabilities that we, uh, that we develop as resources uh, in order to achieve competitive advantage wherever it is that we're attempting to do business. So week four, uh, lecture three, uh, whoops. 
Pardon me. Lecture, what I just said about lecture three uh, will happen in week four, not week three. Uh, uh, that's my mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, so it's it's in week four, and I have to eliminate it from week three. Um, and you'll read chapter five, which is about generic strategy. That's the market positioning stuff that uh, I talked about earlier uh, that was formed by a guy named Michael Porter, who probably did more, has done more to uh, form the nature of strategic management than any other uh, single theorist or methodologist. There's also a little video on analytic models. Uh, and again, these are tools that you can use as a strategic manager uh, to simply bring all that information together and make decisions from it. Uh, and uh, uh, there will probably be a quiz on those models just to make sure, give you a chance, frankly, uh, to review them so that they're stuck in your brain when you walk out the door uh, and go to work, hopefully using those models. Uh, week five, uh, you'll read two chapters on strategic moves and international strategy. So you can see uh, that in week four, we're talking about making strategic decisions uh, and uh, analytic models. Uh, and then uh, week uh, five, we continue on talking about how to make strategic moves. Having made the decisions now, how do we, we put them in place in the marketplace? And uh, because international strategy has some special wrinkles to it, we, uh, we'll, we deal with that separately. And we have another mini case in week five that'll be on Netflix. I'm sure you're familiar with Netflix, especially if you've been cooped up in the house during the coronavirus. Week six uh, has another lecture. This is that one that I mentioned on how to make strategic strategy happen, uh, the uh, approach to implementing strategy. Um, and we skip a chapter. We go from chapter eight to chapter 10. Chapter eight is more on strategy, in this case, diversification, getting into more than one business and perhaps even more than one industry. Uh, chapter 10 is that stuff that I keep talking about and it fits with lecture four, executing strategy. How do you make it happen? How do you really do it? Uh, but chapter 10 is a lot more about, uh, this is where we sort of switch. Uh, chapter 10 is more about operations and my lecture four is more about the theory of implementation. So we do a little reversal there. Um, the, again, we have a mini case, this is on Tesla. Uh, many of you are fascinated by Tesla. I hope this uh, selection of this case pleases you. Uh, but Tesla certainly has done a lot of things differently. And I might add that I put it here because Tesla's secret has been implementation, operations, doing things that others don't, as well as a whole lot of innovation. Uh, so here we are in the finer, final uh, week of the course. Um, and no, there is not a corporate strategy case. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, chapter nine uh, is simply a nice way to finish uh, the course. It's about ethics that uh, you and other managers uh, should, uh, should have and pay attention to as a manager and the corporation's responsibility to society. That's what chapter nine is about. It's also in week seven uh, when uh, I'll provide you uh, with some material about the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic on strategic management decisions. And again, there could be uh, a, a little quiz on that material. 
And it's at the end of this week that the final test, test number two, will be given. Uh, and so uh, that uh, is all. Uh, let me see if I can get this uh, get this thing to. Uh, I hate it when they say, there we go. Ah, all right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this was a long video. I'm sorry to take so much of your time. But I hope that as a result of your sitting through this, this lecture uh, or briefing uh, and uh, uh, running through these slides with me, you've got a good idea of what to expect in this course, how your grade will be calculated, uh, what the topics are, and at least to some extent, why those topics and those items were chosen. Uh, it's a good, rich course in strategic management. It actually contains some things that uh, folks in graduate school uh, get. So if you walk out of this course with a good grade, uh, you will be ready for management, corporate level management, maybe even strategic management. So with that, uh, I'm going to let you go back to doing more enjoyable things. Uh, and uh, I'll look forward to meeting you in person in video conferences and uh, our next uh, meeting on Moodle. Goodbye. <laughs>